If you've never heard of the terms legal fiction or straw man, then what you're about to learn is something that sounds so astonishing that it couldn't possibly be true. If I were to tell you that paying your tax, getting a driver's license, registering your car, paying fines, and attending court are all optional and that you are conned into agreeing with them, what would you think? It has been said that you need to know that you're in a cage before you can escape from that cage. Let's look into how you're being tricked and how your power is being hidden from you. Ah, the government. It loves you and wants to keep you safe and well. It even wants to make paying taxes, fines and court costs easier for you. How? Well, you'll need to meet your straw man. Your straw man is a fictitious legal entity created at your birth through your birth certificate and the registration of that birth. Here is a definition of straw man. A front, a third party who is put up in name only to take part in a transaction. Nominal party to a transaction. Black's Law Dictionary 6th edition. The term is also used in commercial and property contexts when a transfer is made to a party. The straw man simply for the purpose of retransferring to the transferor in order to accomplish some purpose not otherwise permitted. Barron's Third Edition. The straw man is an artificial person. The straw man was created by law shortly after you were born via the registration of the application for your birth certificate. The name for the straw man is your name in all capital letters. You will notice that the inscription on the birth certificate in your name is in all capital letters. The English language has precise rules of grammar that make no provision for writing proper nouns in all capital letters. So your name spelled with all capital letters is a fictitious name. When every human being is born, there's two entities. One is the real entity, which is the human being, the flesh and blood. And the other is a legal fiction, a fictional entity that is nothing more than a piece of paper, the birth certificate. Um, Again, we're, we're duped into believing that these are one in the same, and so we're tricked into representing the, uh, the legal fiction, the straw man, that birth certificate. So when people get fines and things like that, um, it's actually um, consulting the legal fiction, the, the non-existent entity, the corporate entity that is owned by corporations. You have any interactions with the bureaucracy, okay? They're not interacting with you, they're actually, actually interacting with your, with your legal fiction because they can't deal with a, with a flesh and blood human. Yeah, they have to deal with another corporation. When you start to break down the words that we use and you start to look at the roots of all these words and you actually look at where, where these words, what these words actually really mean, you start to get an idea of what's going on. The word corporation is very corporation is very very specific because it's corporation it's dead speak so a corporation is something that's dead it's an entity that exists only in a legal framework it doesn't exist in any other framework at all it only becomes an entity through legal mechanisms and legal means in essence when you were born and far too young to understand a company with your name was created through your birth certificate when your parents registered your birth, they actually created a company and handed ownership of that company and you over to the state. It is important to remember that your parents were tricked and had no idea this was happening. This is why the state can take children from their families and it not be classed as kidnapping. This is where it all began. This is the foundation document. All identification is generated from this document. And these didn't exist before 1933. These only came into being in 1933 when they hatched this plan. They created a corporate fiction with a name just like yours. In doing this, they registered 
and monetized the spirit and soul of a living being. My name is spelt in all capitals here. So is yours. So is your driver's license, your health card, anything you get from the government. Your name is spelt in all capital letters. And when you use any government identification, you are identifying yourself as a corporation and you are existing within the jurisdiction of corporate law. And just because you didn't know what you're doing, that's, that's no excuse. It doesn't exonerate you from liability. There was a bankruptcy in 1933, and the central bankers came in and said, we have a mechanism whereby you can continue to conduct commerce even though you're bankrupt and there's no money. Pledge your citizens as collateral. That happened in 1933, the bankruptcy. And that, by no coincidence, is why these started to be issued in 1933. So you may be walking around thinking you're free and you have rights. But the bottom line is that you are owned, you're a chattel, you're a slave. And these people own you. And that's why they can do things to you against your will because you comply. Right now I'm going to just read a quote from Edward Mendel House and what he had to say in a private meeting with Woodrow uh, Wilson, president between 1913 and 1921 from the private papers of Woodrow Wilson. Quote, very soon Every American will be required to register their biological property in a national system designed to keep track of the people, and that will operate under the ancient system of pledging. By such methodology, we can compel people to submit to our agenda, which will affect our security as chargeback for our fiat paper currency. Every American will be forced to register or suffer not being able to work and earn a living. They will be our chattel, and we will hold the security interest over them forever by operation of law merchant under the scheme of secured transactions. Americans, by unknowingly or unwittingly, delivered the bills of lading to us will be rendered bankrupt and insolvent forever to remain economic slaves through taxation secured by their pledges. They will be stripped of their rights and given commercial value designated to keep us a profit that will be none the wiser. For not one man in a million could ever figure out our plans. And if by accident one or two would figure it out. We have in our arsenal plaus plausible deniability. After all, this is the only logical way to fund government, by floating liens and debt to the registrants in the form of benefits and pledges. This will inevitably reap us huge profits beyond our wildest of expectations and leave every American a contributor to this fraud, which we will call social insurance. Without realizing it, every American will insure us for any loss we may incur, and in this manner, every American will unknowingly be our servant, however begrudgingly. The people will become helpless without any hope for their redemption, and we will employ the high office of the president as our dummy corporation to foment this plot against America. Having established plausible deniability, even if people become enlightened that they had a remedy and pursued it, the attorneys, judges, and legislators could claim that they did not understand the people's claims, especially if the technical requirements for achieving it were not followed pursuant to statutory requirements requiring the public schools to teach civics, government, 
and history classes out of federally approved, politically correct textbooks written by the publishing houses, owned by the owners of the Federal Reserve, would assure that the people would not discover the remedy for a long time, if ever.